Matt. Yes. What's up, dude? How you doing? Doing all right. A little chilly up here, but uh, yeah. doing okay. Here too. Uh, we actually got some winter for a change. Yeah, finally. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the past two days yeah. it's been pretty cold out. Yeah. yeah. Now, Matt, you're in uh, New Hampshire, right? Correct. Yes. Sweet. The Great White North or something. <laughs> Maybe that's Canada. I don't know. Part of the Great White North. <laughs> yeah. And you run yeah. IPM Nation. The that, that, that is correct. The station we're on. And how long have you been doing that? Well, the uh, the original company, Impact Player Music, which is what IPM stood for originally, uh, started in 2000. But we really kind of morphed it in IPM Nation around 2000. Yeah, early 2007. So, wow, that's nearly a decade. Holy yeah, shit! Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, dude. And especially back then, like. I, I don't know, like, internet radio, I wouldn't have thought it would have become anything like it is now. But even XM, XM got so bad with the regulations and all. Yeah, and it's just FM and AM are just so FM shit. FM had been gone. FM had been gone. And then there was Sirius and XM, and it was great. And then when they merged, I remember, because I used to have XM for Opie and Anthony, and when yeah. they merged, they just the stuff they weren't allowed to do anymore, it was, it was horrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, look what happened to Anthony, Anthony Cumia. I mean, when, when he got fired, it, it didn't even have anything to do with anything he did on the air. Right. right. It had and nothing like to do with it. And like it's sweet to make him. Yeah. And, and now he's into a much worse shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah now, now you're just watching him degrade. Oh, man. man. Did you see the last thing when he, he had that girl over? I don't even know what happened, dude. It was shady. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He had it, some... it, it's too bad because he had a, a good thing going, or I mm. guess in theory he still has a good thing going with the Anthony Cumia network. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but you know, it's a shame to see him just kind of screw the whole thing up. I mean, <sighs> I th even if, even if he, what, he, what she says is not true and that uh, he really didn't hit her, you know, still just you got to be – careful about who you're associating with you yeah, know yeah yeah he's just acting and if way he, too crazy and if he really did hit her then i just you know immediately lose all respect for him if that turns out to be you know proven to be true yeah, yeah. i was waiting for them to just start laughing and be like april fools even though it was what I really january think it, but like, i really think it was like a drunken brawl i think they were both hitting something each other. and like sometimes and he said you know it's not as it seems but sometimes things are exactly what they seem yeah. like i think like if she was hitting yeah. him he could have just gotten the fuck out of there yeah well I mean, he yeah. was still asking her to like hang out it was really weird and what, yeah it's what, so what, creepy what was weird yeah. is him, like, running at her when she had the phone. Like, you would think he would know better. Just like, stay away. Yeah. he knows that she has the phone out. He knows she's periscoping it. Go away. Periscoping, like, yeah. Like, go, like, go to a different room or something. I like, really... being in media and knowing that, you'd think he would have that knowledge to be like, I'm just going to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, I mean, it looked like, too, I mean, if he was, because uh, he has a reputation for being quite a drinker, so I can imagine him being drunk and not, not, thinking it through like yeah you know, thinking about the, the consequences of what he's doing because yeah i saw the video and it's like at the end of it it's like he's stalking her yeah you know it, it, it's he's uh, egging her it's on provoking her yeah like well, why would you do that oh, he was like straight up egging her on you could he, like, he's like i hope yeah. you don't trip over the ottoman and stuff yeah it was, <laughs> it was crazy man and matt how many shows do you do on ipm Jeez. Uh, well, let's see. I'm Matt Connerton Unleashed. Uh, I host a show called Local Outbreak. Um, I'm a co-host on a show called Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades. Uh, Jen and I have a show called Angry Drunk Tales. <laughs> uh, so that's four. Wow. And uh, I'm sure there's more and I'm forgetting something. Because Chris from <laughs> Chris and Johnny told me you, you did a bunch. That's awesome, dude. How do you have time yeah. for that many shows? Like, how do you prep for that? that many different things you know i don't do a lot of show prep like for matt connerton unleashed i um with uh you know that that show focuses largely not entirely as you know but largely on politics and you know with donald trump around for example i don't even have to do much show prep i just go online and see what he said or did yeah uh in the last 24 hours and i've got plenty of material um you know, local outbreak, I interview musicians, and I just, you know, book a musician I like and then show up, and cool. we have a conversation and record it. And, you know, so there's really not, you know, for me, there's not a lot of show prep. It's a lot of it's pretty 
spontaneous. And how do you deal with, like, when problems occur? Like, because I know when I message you, like, you know, if something's going on, like, do you get a lot of, do you get a lot of messages all day long? Some days, yeah. Um, Usually, uh, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of the time, most of the time it's not technical issues, but they do, you know, as you yourself have seen, they, they do pop up. Uh, we had one pop up today, in fact, that I had to deal with. Um, yeah, it's, um, I mean, I, I just, it's a lot of work. Like, I'm, fortunately, I'm a workaholic. I like to, I love to work. Yeah. Um, I, I love to feel like I'm accomplishing something. So that's kind of, you know, I mean, there's, there's a trade off. I uh, don't have much of a, a social life to speak of. But <laughs> uh, for, fortunately, Jen uh, is, um, you know, she kind of plunged in too with IPM Nation. So, we we spend uh, a lot of time together working together, but but it but it is work. I mean, I, I work seven days a week, pretty much from when I wake up in the morning to when I go to bed at night. Once in a while, we'll watch a movie or something, but we haven't even done that in a long time. But wow, <laughs> but I like to be busy. <laughs> yeah, that's all I about the show, man. Like even when I'm not when I'm, I have another job, you know, when I'm not doing that, it's like just emailing people, potential guests, you know, staying in touch with current guests and all that kind of stuff and tweeting and, and all that. Cause I can imagine, man, running a whole station. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's very rewarding. It, uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of years just kind of trying to do it, try, trying to do this full time while working another full time job. Yeah. And, uh, this is, um, in some ways it's more stressful doing this full time cause you got to, you know, you got to make sure that the business keeps going, and that can be a challenge. Uh, but it's it's still better than than you know waking up every morning and and going to a job that I hate, and then yeah. trying to find time later in the day to to work on this. You know, so I actually got fired from my last full time job. So then it was like, okay, well, I guess uh, it's just destiny that now I do this full time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was going to ask if you did anything else. I was just thinking too, like. When you mentioned that, like, about a week ago, I was like, shit, I don't have any anything booked for February. And now I have, I think, like, one show open in February. Like, And I basically filled two spots in that already, so. Yeah, well, you guys do a great job as far as uh, getting guests. I mean, I, I've, I've noticed that. That's something I noticed uh, right from the right from the beginning when you first reached out to me and, and you know, expressed an interest in coming to IPM Nation. It was like, oh, these guys... You know, I yeah, I just looked at the SoundCloud page. I was like, oh, these guys have guests on every show. They and and I recognized some of the names too. And it was like, okay, you know, these are this is the real deal. You know, wow, so. that's cool. Yeah, because I I was told too, and I I didn't think of it at first. Like how many interviews we do a show, it yeah. sets us apart. Like, mm-hmm. oh, definitely, yeah. You guys do a long show. I mean, five. I remember too when you told me you know you're you're on Wednesdays five thirty to ten. To ten, I was like, holy shit! I mean, I know it's only once a week, but still, I mean, that's it, that's a, a, a real commitment to to do that every week. So I uh, I applaud you. And it flies, man. It's like wow, like the night's more than half over, and it, it also makes Wednesday cool. Like, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of that just yeah. the other day. Like, when yeah. has Wednesday ever been cool? And actually, Monday I look forward really? to because that's when I. Um, touch base with all the upcoming oh, yeah, guests. Yeah. I send the confirmations and all, and it's just—it's a cool thing. It, it definitely makes the week cooler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, there was a time when the only thing cool about Wednesdays was, you know, it was Prince Spaghetti Day. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's now it's Robin Swim Day. That's, right, that's, we that's took better. that. Yeah. Matt, although, although I do love spaghetti, but... me too. Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, gonna right. have a spaghetti meatball day on Roller Robinson. Spaghetti. Yeah. We could do that. Yeah. Uh, spaghetti. Did you ever see Tim and Eric? They did um, this <laughs> guy yeah. called Spaghetti, and he just threw a pound of spaghetti at somebody. It was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, um, I also saw you're a hypnotherapist. Yes, yes. I help people to quit smoking and lose weight and eliminate phobias and all that kind of stuff. More. More uh, quitting smoking, though, than anything else. That's, can you make him like a uh, chicken or like something else? Because <laughs> I was going to ask if you can come down and hypnotize Pete and Slim. <laughs> you know, I, 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 yeah, I mean, most most people, um, 
uh, they, uh, you know, like I can't, I, it, it's not, let me put it this way, it's not mind control, it's not like what you see on TV and in the movies, which is oh. kind of what a lot of people think it is, Yeah. but, um, you know, but as long as, as long as someone wants to uh, make change, like whether it's quitting smoking or whatever it is, you know, anyone, anyone can be hypnotized. Um, That's cool. I, I was always interested in the quitting smoking thing, because... Yeah, I've yeah. never been able to quit, even with like patches and all that other shit. Yeah, I can actually, uh, I could send you an MP3 that would uh, probably help you with that. Cool. Um, but uh, yeah, so and I'm, I've also uh, I've done some stage hypnosis. I've done a few stage shows where you know you bring people up and you hypnotize them and get them, get them to do uh, silly things. Yeah, and, I never knew if that um, was real or not. Like people it, just it, go it with actu- it. Most, it right? actually is. Um, because, and I, I can tell you how it works without really giving too much away. It's not like a magician where, you know, I, I really shouldn't explain it, but, um, <clears throat> with, with the stage hypnosis, the reason that, um, the hypnotist can get people to come up and, and do whatever the hypnotist wants them to do is because the people who are coming up on stage want to be hypnotized. That's they want to participate. Yeah. So they're, so they're very easily suggestible. So it's, because if you notice, if you ever watch a stage show, the hypnotist, like let's say I'm on stage and I, I'm asking for volunteers in the audience, I'm only going to pick the people who are really excited and eager to come up on stage. Mm. I'm not going to try to be a hero yeah. and pick somebody who's just sitting there with their arm fold, arms folded going, oh, I don't even believe in this. I, I just came to see how stupid this is. <laughs> because that person is not going to let me hypnotize. That's what I was going to ask if there were people that couldn't be. Right. I mean, no one can be hypnotized against their will. Um, you know, they have to be willing to let me do it. But the people wow. who are really excited to go up, they're going to be easy to hypnotize because they're going to, to just go with it and let me do that. Um, and then, you know, they're putty in my hands. I can get them to do whatever they want because on a subconscious level, they want to be able to ham it up and, and have fun and whatnot. So it's easy to get them to do silly things. That they're not even going to remember afterwards because <laughs> on a subconscious level they want to. Pete does that every week for us. He does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're I did too last week. There was an interview I forgot, and then I, I texted Pete something that happened after, and he's like, "I didn't even remember that." I'm like, "Dude, I didn't either, man." Like, That's alcohol yeah. hypnosis. <laughs> alcohol hypnosis. <laughs> we do it to ourselves. <laughs> there you go. That's a uh, form of uh, self hypnosis. There, some, some meditation. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, of sorts. Who are some of your uh, favorite interviews you've ha- you've had? Oh wow. Um, well, let's see. I mean, I haven't. It's not like I've interviewed a lot of like really famous people. Um, I have uh, Jen and I together actually on my uh, the, the television version of my show. Um, we interviewed uh, Congressman Frank Ginta who is the only sitting United States congressman so far to ever be on my show. You know, I've interviewed other, you know, ex, ex-congressmen and, and, and various candidates and so forth, but uh, Frank Inta is an actual sitting United States congressman. So that, that one's kind of special to me. That's cool. Uh, just because that was a really good get. Uh, Jen, Jen uh, knows, um, she's, she does the booking, most of the booking. She, she, uh, she's very good, good with that. And uh, what got you into uh, radio? Well, um, you know, it's weird. I, I was interested in radio. Like I thought about it as a career uh, for, for a potential career when I was in high school and then uh, didn't go to school right away and just kind of forgot about it actually for a long time. And then I got more into being a musician. You know, I've played in a ton of bands and whatnot. And, uh, and I forgot about actually the idea of, actually working in radio is more focused on just being a musician. And then in, I think it was 2006, um, I was a guest. I was in a band at the time called First Shove, a metal band, and I was a guest on a show called The Metal Classroom on an internet station called RageRockRadio.com, which isn't around anymore. And the um, I ended up being offered the gig of hosting the show. Nice. Um, the owner of the station really liked, uh, just liked me and thought I was good on the radio. And, and the, uh, the host at the time was kind of on her way out anyway. So he offered me the gig. So I, so I took that and that kind of got me started. Um, you know, then I thought, well, 
why don't I take Impact Player Music, which at that time was just doing, you know, we were doing some uh, a lot of promotional stuff and, and artist management and stuff like that. I was like, maybe I can add an internet radio component to Impact Player Music. And when we, we, we started with one show, there was originally just one show called IPM Nation that uh, a friend and I hosted. We would interview musicians and do some skits and stuff. And then uh, we, we found other people who wanted to come on board. And next thing you know, we had a bunch of shows and we called the station IPM Nation. And nice. It you just, just kinda, took it. Yeah, yeah. We just took it and ran with it. And um, it's kind of a blur, but it's because <laughs> it grew really fast. It was like, wow. Uh, uh, it, it's. Uh, it's weird how something that I was interested in doing in high school, you know, I had this yeah. big gap, and now it's become become a career for me. I, um, I, all these years later, I remember when I started in radio. Um, one of the DJs told me, as a DJ, you'll just live comfortably, but as a sales, working in sales, uh, you know, for the advertisement and all, then you could then you could make some money. But they told me just entering radio, like as a DJ. Um, you're, you're not going to make that much. Yeah. Unless you're syndicated or something. Yeah. And that's what they said. Unless you're like tough. Howard or, or O and a, you're not going to make anything. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The money is in syndication and of course in sales too. I mean, th there's some, some sales guys who do really well. Although even that I've known some people <laughs> who've uh, worked in sales for clear channel who, who have said it, it can be brutal. Wow. You know, because, um, uh, internet radio and of course satellite radio have really made things tough on terrestrial radio as far as selling ad time. Obviously they're still doing it, but they're, they're selling all their ad time a lot cheaper than they used to. And, uh, it, it's gotten to be very tough to even make money, uh, with, with, uh, sales, uh, just, just based on, you know, anecdotal evidence, you know, the things that, uh, people have told me it's gotten a lot tougher. Yeah, that's what uh, we've been trying. I, I've been trying. Whoa, what happened in the fridge? <laughs> <laughs> I think our intern just got fucking faced with the oven door. Oh, but, uh, sure. <laughs> but yeah, I've been trying to find for our show, you know, just sponsors. It's been tough, dude. I had one thing called yeah. Pod Wallet that was supposed to uh, get oh, us. Yeah, I forgot about that. We signed that. I even, too, yeah. yeah, we signed a paper. I even uh, messaged them a few weeks ago and they never got back to me. I was like, what's going on with they that? They checked out the show and they were just like, we can't. <laughs> Yeah, it, it can be it can be tough. Um, you know who else has a hard time is uh, Godless Liberty. We actually talked about this on the air um, with uh, Stanny from Godless Liberty. You know, even just the name of the show uh, yeah. will, will drive potential sponsors away, and it's uh, yeah, it's 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 tough. <laughs> wow, that is rough, yeah. dude. That's why I, even uh, we've had some people come back to us angry you know we should have looked up your show before like yeah you should have like you should have looked into our show like i don't hide anything like you could just just google us just right, google right. our show and uh just find out a little about us but <laughs> i i think there's kind of a weird trend with that I, I don't think it's just you guys because um i know that uh you know you mentioned o and a earlier there's some uh youtube videos uh where you know they're they're messing with different guests that they've had I've on over that, the yeah. years, different yeah. authors and stuff. And it's like, you realize pretty quick, listen, and those are hilarious when they're messing with these different authors <laughs> and, you know, people selling stuff. And it's like, oh my God, these, these guests, they don't, they, they, it's like they have no idea what show they're going on or anything about it. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> and they were a big name then too. And they're still yeah. getting these people. Yeah. I loved it when they were like fucking with Tommy Lee and they, and they kept on calling and he was getting pissed off and he kept on hanging up on them. And they kept on calling yeah. him back, and oh he'd, God, he'd answer ass, every man. time. Like. Yeah. Wow, what a dumbass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Matt, I was, yeah. Uh, Matt, I was wondering, like, uh, where do you record with your studio? Because I've seen some pictures, mm. um, and it looks like you're in a shop. Well, we're in, uh, we're in the Uptown Auto Repair Studio. They're our, they're our prime sponsor. Um, but we, we do the show at a couple different places, so, so that's where we do all the radio stuff. 
And then we also have the uh, TV studio, which is at NPCS. Uh, we use uh, that space here, a uh, local uh, television property here in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, where I am. That's where we do all, well, most of our television, although we're actually in the process of, uh, we're, pretty soon we're going to have, I don't know if it's going to be called um, IPN Nation or what exactly it's going to be called, but we're going to have our own, um, working with our sponsor, Uptown Auto, we're going to have a, our own uh, television studio where we'll be able to do a lot more than we're doing now. Um, wow. Because the, the, the visual component, and you guys know because you you know you uh, show what you're doing on UStream. The, a lot of people really like the visual component of yeah. the show. They like to, which I I think I think part of it is you know it's like I remember growing up, I would always wonder. I would listen to the radio and always wonder what the DJs look like. Yeah, you know, it's just something you just want to know what people look like. It's just a just, you know, people are curious about that. It's a human and, instinct. Uh, yeah. So, so I think, you know, even if you're doing, like, my show, the television version of it really isn't that big a deal in terms of, it's like, if I don't have a guest, it's just me sitting there yelling at the camera. It's really no different <laughs> than the radio version, except you get to see me uh, yelling at the camera instead of just yelling into a microphone. Um, but yeah, people just like to see what people look like. And, mm -hmm. um, last night I turned on the, uh, I didn't get to see it live, but I turned on the state of the union address, uh, because I was initially just going to listen to it. But then I was like, no, I got to see it because, you know, obviously I already know what Obama looks like and yeah. I, I know what Joe Biden and Paul Ryan look like, but I want to see the expressions on their faces yeah. while Obama is giving his speech. You know what I mean? Yeah. For some reason, the visual component was That's... important to me, and I ended up watching it for well, most of it. What I think is cool about us, because sometimes I'll pass a note to Pete, and it's like something for him to say, or some, just us giving looks to each other. Yeah. Um, but that's what I was going to ask. Like, doing a show alone, is it is it hard? Because I, I don't think I could ever do that. Like. Yeah, just, just, you, just by yourself, you mean? Just... Yeah. Yeah, I well, you know, you might you might be surprised. I mean, I, I I'll, I'll tell you what. I gotta be honest with you. The show that I do, and I'm not always alone, but when I am alone, I, if if someone had said, you know, six or seven years ago to me that I would eventually be doing a show like that, I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't have thought that I had it in me. Yeah. Um, I I kind of surprised myself because to be completely honest with you, and. It, 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 it doesn't seem like it on the air, but um, away from a microphone or a, a television camera or when I'm not on a stage or whatever, I'm actually kind of an introvert. I'm kind of a quiet dude. I don't, right. you know, I'm not particularly talkative or outgoing or whatever. Um, so, but I, what I realize now is the, I think the reason I can do the kind of show that I do is because that's like my, time to really just kind of, you know, like the people who want to come up on stage and be hypnotized, you know, me doing the show, that's my time to really just kind of let it all out, just let it fly, you know what right. I mean? These are the things that live without. <laughs> <laughs> Pete is eating, uh, was it, a uh, Cadbury, Cadbury, Cadbury <laughs> cream egg, is it good? We totally forgot about all it. Right, so all right, so the I used to love those when I was a kid. Me too, and I, I even recently, but this past year we saw an article where they cheapened their ingredients, so they weren't as good. And Pete is, I forgot, earlier I bought one, and it was it was like real soft, so I put it in the freezer. So the chocolate, oh, really? the chocolate's yeah. definitely low quality. Really? <laughs> the low quality chocolate. Dude, right. and I never had uh, two of Jules. My girlfriend always says uh, she loves the uh, the little the just mini chocolate ones? eggs. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I never had those till a few years ago, and I love them too. Yeah, but they're good. If they've, if they've gotten their chocolate shitty, then... The cream is still the same as ever. <laughs> yeah. Same jizz. Same you know. goodness. <laughs> same thick, sugary, syrupy jizz. Angel jizz. But, but the, the chocolate isn't a chocolate egg. Chocolate's definitely lower quality chocolate. Right. Wow. I thought the recipe would have changed with the cream, not with the That's uh, what the I chocolate. thought, too. Yeah. Like, but then I, I, I read it was a chocolate. and uh, That's a bummer. Yeah, man. Because I, I, as a kid, I never had one, really. And I remember my dad always saying how gross they were. <laughs> and then my friend Dave in like high school said they were great. So I tried one. I fucking loved it. <laughs> And, uh... Yeah, I used, to, I used to eat them for breakfast. No, oh, I, I, would, I would eat them for breakfast, which oh, is 
looking back, it's like, oh, that's kind of nasty. <laughs> yeah, I used, to, I used to do the same thing. I used to work at fucking 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'd have a Coke and a Three Musketeers bar, and that was my breakfast. My Aunt Diane yeah. used to drink a Coke. Uh, in the morning, and when she brought my uh, cousin Brian to school one day, he said, Mommy, when are you going to stop doing coke in the morning? Oh. <laughs> she was like, I swear to God, he's talking about soda. That's awkward. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Matt, we got to wrap this up with you, man. Why don't you uh, let everybody know where they can find you, and then we'll let you go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm easy to find. him on Facebook, of course. Uh, Matt Connerton, C-O-N-N-A-R-T-O-N. Uh, you can uh, tweet at me, at Matt Connerton, of course, and you can find me on IPNNation.com. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to get to me. And, uh, you know, there aren't a lot of Matt Connertons, so <laughs> if you Google me, I'm really, really easy to locate. <laughs> yeah, man. I think we got a call coming in here. Robert Slim Show. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Mike Sicoli. Uh, Mike, can you uh, give us about, uh, you want to call back in about like five minutes? Yeah, sure. All right, dude. Thank you. No problem, man. <laughs> Later, dude. All right, Matt. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. This has been fun. Thanks for coming thank on, you. dude. It was awesome. Coming on, bro. Yep, anytime. All right, take care, guys. You take too. Take it easy. See you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, dude. Yeah, man. So definitely a lower quality chocolate man wow dude no. i'm surprised like why would they fuck with that you can tell like you know how like hershey's chocolate like all you taste is sugar yeah yeah and hershey's dairy shit, yeah dude. except it's just... if you get the almond yeah the almond is good because it's got the almonds yeah like... but the sugar and all you taste is sugar and dairy yeah. it's the same exact thing like... and i never thought cadbury would go to there yeah cadbury is always a little better chocolate yeah they're just cheaping out that's it's what like it is. the uh what's the the better Hershey's, the... Oh, yeah, the Symphony. You know I mean? The Symphony. The yeah. Symphony is good. That should... Well, also, it's Hershey... so good. Hershey uses sour milk. Hershey's, like, regular bar tastes like... Yeah, man. See, that's why I don't Dude, I don't eat the regular milk. chocolate for Hershey's. I, yeah. yeah. They deliberately use sour milk in their chocolate. You guys are out of Princely's? They were, they were out of Oh. All right, guys, we're taking a quick break. We'll be back. Yeah. 